Happy Lent. This is Father Tom coming to you again, and I hope your Lent is happy. The more we strip away sin, the more we encounter Christ, the more we immerse himself in his grace, that's going to be a happy Lent. The hard thing is we have to take a tough look at ourselves to be able to strip away those things of pride, those things of our character defects, those things of our, of our defense mechanisms, to let them fall away and let God flow more smoothly into our heart. Last week I talked about fasting. And a diet without prayer is a diet, but fasting is kind of a diet with prayer. Prayer is so important, so today I'm going to talk about prayer. Generally, I think everybody knows that there's five types of prayer. There's prayer or blessing and worship, there's praise, intercession, petition, and thanksgiving. I think we do well at a lot of them, but I, I think the one we kind of need to focus on a little bit is thanksgiving. Because that's the one we tend to forget about. We ask God for a lot of things. We praise God. We, we pray and whatnot. But to really listen and give thanks for what we have done and what, uh, what he's saying back to us it requires some silence and some focus and some, uh, some dedication to try to enhance your relationship with God. I was in a, a former parish. And the farming community I was in begged me to do a Mass for rain because we hadn't had rain for a long time. So I did. We did a Mass for rain. And lo and behold, three or four days later, it rained. It was about seven weeks after that, they asked me to do another Mass for rain. I said, no. I bet I was kidding. I said, I'm not going to do it. Absolutely not. They said, why not? And I said, because I did a Mass for rain and it rained. On the day it rained, you packed the coffee house and drunk and talked about how nice it was it rained. Nobody came to church to say thank you to God. I assure you, the next time I did a Mass it rained, the church was packed. We need to be reminded to say thank you when God answers our prayers. And he's so generous, he's so kind, he's so good to us that Thanksgiving is so important. And prayer, there's a lot of different prayers. Some are pre-written. There's some that uh, there's novenas. There's a tremendous amount of, uh, of holy uh, words from the saints we can read. But prayer is also relationship when we talk to God. I was probably 16 years old and playing games with my faith as most 16-year-olds did, sometimes going to Mass, sometimes not, stuff like that. And uh, my mother got very sick, her gallbladder uh, ruptured, and she was filled with a lot of uh, poisons and she became septic. And the doctors said that she probably wouldn't live. I went out that morning, it was a very foggy morning, it was by Hanscom Park, and the fog was so thick you couldn't even see a, a, a foot in front of your face. I walked all the way down to the lagoon, I stood one of the rocks, and I was so angry that mom was sick. I'm going to mess around, not her. I was so angry that God was doing to him in this so faith hill. And I remember I want somebody else to hurt like I was hurting. And I just was swinging my fist and the mist would kind of go and they would come together almost mocking me. And I just was swinging my fist and swinging my fist. And I realized, man, this must look really stupid to whoever's walking by. So I quit. And I sat down. I started to cry. And I screamed at God. There in the mist, there in the fog, the side of a rock, by Hanscom Park Lagoon, I screamed at him. It wasn't until I was done I realized I just prayed. I just prayed. He knew I was angry. I knew I was angry. Tell him I'm angry. The conversation is relationship. And the pre-written prayers are very important. They guide us. But to be able to communicate with God what our thoughts, what our feelings, what we're about. Not to seem better than we are. Not to try to seem we're without fault but come humbly before our God. Admit our sinfulness, admit our pride, admit our fracture, admit what's hurting our heart, what's at the core of stopping us from feeling peace and serenity, and to give it over to God, the only person who can heal us, support us, nurture us, love us, and forgive us. One of the best ways we can do that is when we come to Eucharist. Eucharist means to give thanks. Lent is a wonderful time to come in the Eucharist and be able to thank God for everything we have. There was somebody a while back that once said, if you lost everything tomorrow which you didn't thank God for today, what would be left? Now we're so blessed, it's hard to thank God for everything. When you come to Eucharist, you're saying thank you for all the ways you're blessed in everything. Now Eucharist is active participation. We join with one another and we pray. But there's static participation as well. And that's when we come before the Blessed Sacrament and we offer our hearts over to God and we pray. It's often the, said to be the uh, Eucharistic adoration is the action of the Mass held in contemplation. 
all the prayers, all the holiness, everything about the man is right there before us for us to contemplate, to pray, to let God enter into our hearts. Every Friday during Lent, we're having Eucharistic adoration here in the church. It begins about 9.30 with exposition, ends about 5.20 with benediction, but adoration is happening all day. What a great gift to take just a few minutes out of your life to stop in and give yourself over to God in an honest way, in a wholesome way, in a way without any filters. Let him know what you're bothered with. Let him know how you feel. Invite his peace and his love into your heart. Because if you do that, it'll be a happy Lent. God bless you.